Well, once again, thank you for clicking on this video. We do really do appreciate that. We're on our way to get to that 700. We're about mm, a little under 40 there. So let's keep it going there. Uh, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, share, and don't forget to comment below because we'd like to hear what your thoughts are on all these videos that we do present daily to you here on all of our social media platforms. Well, we discussed something in the past before what's going on in Florida. People have criticized what's going on there, but they don't see what the outcomes of some of these projects and these new rules and laws, um, what comes to be, you know. A perfect example is what's going on on the infrastructure in Florida. They're, they're slowly rebuilding the infrastructure. And with a lot of the new designs and everything like that, you know, you have Universal Studios. Uh, they're building that new section on there. Uh, the I-5 is getting a new look to it. It's getting a rebuild finally after so many years. You know, finally, Dis they, they've dissolved that section that Disney uh, was part of. Uh, finally, the tax dollars will be going to where it's supposed to be to, to uh, fully help the state itself where it wasn't really um, controlled by the state. It was controlled by Disney itself. And, you know, people like saying, well, it's because of that uh, don't say gay b bullshit. This is a long time coming for Disney. They violated what they originally was supposed to be. They were supposed to have built a city, and most people don't realize it. There was supposed to be a city built here. Well, what did they build? An amusement park. That's all they did. Epcot. You know, when Disney died, he wanted for Florida, never came to flourishion. So it's about time that uh, this got fixed and Disney starts to cough up. Now, one of the major things down there, and we talked about the infrastructure, is basically transporting so many people, because there's so much in Florida uh, from the, the top of the panhandle all the way down uh, to the bottom of Florida, down to the Key West. One of the major things on there is, is you, you know, you can go out and rent a car, travel back and forth, and I've done that before when I lived in Florida in the 90s. I traveled back and forth, and it took time. I mean, it's a nice trip. Uh, it's a long trip. It's about uh, two and a half, three hours uh, between where I used to live and uh, to get to Orlando. And it's nice to have a car going around all over the place. But, you know, people always said there should be a railway system covering it. Even though Amtrak covers from bottom to top, but they they don't give any service. You would have to pay extra just to get there. You know, you would pay so much more money. It's cheaper to rent a car or to take a, take a uh, bus up to uh, Orlando, for example. But now they've built the new Brightline system, which I think is a marvelous thing that they did. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. It is one of the the, the biggest uh, infrastructure improvements made to South Florida. I wish they did it sooner. I might have stayed longer. But, uh, but think about this. You have a rail line now, as of today, that will take you from Miami straight up to, I believe they already opened the Orlando International stop. So it'll take you all the way up to Orlando, the Orlando International Airport. But eventually what will happen is it will take you across uh, through, through uh, I-5 and Inter International Drive, Universal Studios, all the way to Tampa. Now, Disney was supposed to get their own stop, but unfortunately, as stuck up as Disney is lately, and how stupid they've been acting. Uh, they fucked up and basically decided, well, we don't need to stop. Biggest mistake ever, because basically that would have saved a lot of time, uh, especially for their um, cruise customers, because basically Brightline does cover that area where Disney's cruises park their boats. There is a stop near there that will get them a lot closer than before. Before you would have to take a bus from the Disney resorts or from the airport, which would take a little, a, a lot longer actually uh, 
to get to the cruise lines. Here, the, the train, and, and the train is fast. It is fast, and this is what we're going to be talking about today. The Southeastern Corridor is still being tested. Like I said, they're, they're just about to open Orlando International. Uh, that stopped there. Um, but a lot of people are asking, how fast can this train go? How fast, you know, can it get from Miami to Orlando? Well, it just broke a new speed record. The original was 110 miles an hour, and now it it will reach the speeds of 130 miles per hour. See, this is what we've needed in this country. We needed railway systems similar to in Japan, where the, the high speed gets you from place to place at a rapid pace. But uh, due to some of our politicians and the way they've been acting and diverting funds to their own projects and not to infrastructure, even though they market infrastructure, but it's not really going to infrastructure. And we've already seen this in the crash um, that uh, tanker crash that basically now that little town, mm, who knows what infections and sicknesses and cancers they're going to have for the rest of their lives. So let's read this off of Railway News. Brightline has set a new record for operating the fastest train in Florida and the southeastern United States after reaching speeds of 130 miles an hour. This achievement took place while completing testing on Brightline's new 35-mile corridor between Orlando International and COCA. By reaching 130 miles an hour, the op operators has broke down its previous records at 110, which was set last year between uh, Martin and St. Lucie counties. Brightline trains in South Florida currently are operating at 79, 79 miles per hour on the Orlando extension from West Palm Beach to Coca. This will be increased to 110. And from Coca to Orlando International Airport, they'll be increased, be able to travel 125 miles per hour. Once it opens up later this year, the Orlando station will provide a rail connection between Orlando and Miami, which are the two most congested city pairs in the nation. The Brightline train sets sets for this route were manufactured by Siemens uh, Rolling Stock Facility in Sacramento, California, and are powered by two locomotives with 16 cylinders, 4,000 HPs, Kumis EPA Tier 4 com compliant diesel electric engines. And I'll tell you, I've seen pictures of it. I've seen it in action. There are videos online by a couple of YouTubers. Uh, it is a comfortable trip. It's very nice. It's clean. It's fast. This is what's needed in South Florida, especially one thing about the East Coast, East Coast, a lot of the East Coast, a lot of the West Coast, we have busy airports. I mean, not knocking on Texas and Chicago, but, you know, a lot, a good congestion of the international, the cruise lines come through Florida. A lot of the cruise lines are in Florida on there, both South and Central. And basically getting from place to place, from airport to airport. I mean, you have, um, what is it? It is three major airports. I think it's Orlando, Miami, and Fort Lauderdale. And then you have a couple of a dozen sm smaller airports ranging in various sizes. Uh, West Palm and a couple of others that are just, you know, smaller airports. And then there's the really single, single engine, uh, single plane air airports, which are just like private jets, lines on there. But when you have, you know, you have your customership, that basically, and listen, it might be cheaper to fly into Miami, but they need to get to Orlando and vice versa. Here you have the chance to just jump on, get out, get off your plane, your flight, jump, jump into a uh, train, get to your destination and get to your hotels. See, the thing about it is like with the Orlando International, it's going to go, it's going to sl sl slide right into International Drive, go right to the convention center in the heart of basically the hotel districts, especially a lot of conventioneers come through. It's going to be a lot faster than them to go there than to travel by bus or by, by car. Because I've done that. I've gone from the airport to the, ho to the hotel districts. It takes a little time. By, by railway, very comfortable. You can have a drink, you know, sit down, relax, get to your destination, jump off, and go right into your hotel. How convenient is that?
How screwed up is, is Disney not to take advantage of this situation? Well, they went crying to the side, tried to get involved in politics, and this is what you get. You're a business. You know, you have to respect the customer and your stockholders. Guess what? They didn't either. They didn't either. All they're doing is their woke thoughts and politics changing rides and all that. But meanwhile, we've already seen the record lines on the West Coast at Super Mario Land, at that Super Mario Brothers Land, at the Nintendo World that they're built, that they have built there. It, you know, 2025 is going to be a big time. They opened that this whole new park with that, with more rides and um, another part of Harry Potter's world, which you already see that you know Hag the Hagrid ride. You still have two, three hour waits to this day. Yeah, sure, D Disney is crowded, uh, but they they're not getting the customers that they used to get. Why? Because they're overcharging. The prices are set too high. You've already seen their, their Galaxy Hotel fail miserably. People don't want to spend $6,000 for two, a two-night stay in a hotel. God, and you know, live, living in the 90s, I didn't pay some of the rates, you know, because because I lived in Florida and worked for a particular company. And uh, what was it? I paid $100 for just for four parks for two days. You know, same thing with uh, Universal Studios. I used to pay um, for one day and I get an additional day for free. And they don't really do that anymore. I don't know about Universal, but I know Disney doesn't do that anymore. So let's see what further goes. And you know, the, here, here's the funny part before we uh, touch off here. Brightline has done a deal with California that they want to build a Brightline there as well from LA to Nevada to, to Vegas. But let's see how that goes because we know what happened with the last train that they tried to... Um, put together uh actually they're still trying to put it together because basically basically it has been behind schedule for the last several years now and way over budget and it's going nowhere so tell me in the comments below your thoughts uh how you feel about this uh you're planning to use it on your next trip to florida uh don't forget to hit that like subscribe share and we'll see you on the next video Thank you for tuning in and clicking on this video. Uh, have a good week and enjoy yourself.